Okay, so what I wanted to show today was a uh, a quick live dry brushing on this here. We've shown off this piece a lot. It's got a lot of attention. Um, so I thought I would put down another panel on it and then we can record this video, have it for other people. And I can also answer any questions that we have of people as we go. So I'm going to do one of the side panels and I'm going to try and emulate this time type of uh, kind of smooth, smooth, but still interesting textured patina uh, that worked so well on the first time. And it's, I believe the first time I just did it with black and white paint. So that is what I'm going to try and replicate. Um, let's see if that is achievable or not. It's nicer sometimes to use a middle gray but um, it's also kind of a challenge to see what you can do just using um, just using black and white. All right, so we'll be using matte black and matte white. So, hey there guys. All right, so I'm gonna show you clearly on the palette exactly how I do this type of thing. Uh, it's always with two lines of paint. It's quite an extreme example, just using the two colors for, for absolutely everything, but um, we'll, we'll have to see. How it goes. Now it's important if you've had a model sitting for a while, especially if it's been around the area that you've been dry brushing, and, uh, to make sure you've not got any flecks of paint on it. Um, they'll all get picked up by that. That could be from dry brushing work you've been doing. Uh, you do get you do get powder coming off and kind of making dust in the air. So I'm just going to give it a clean before I've even started painting uh, with the very same brush brush that we're going to be using for the actual paint itself. Hello everyone. Any questions guys, fire away. Um, thank you to each and every one of you who backed the campaign that finished yesterday. We're, we're pretty stoked with how it's gone. Okay. So using a large here, not an extra large today. And then we're just going to grab, grab our paints, mixing together here on the palette. I'm using a smoother palette because we're going to be dry brushing on a smoother surface. So um, that's the reason why. And we're just putting down our base coat. Uh, the last one we had the light source kind of back there. So I think we'll go for the same again. That's a little bit too light for my liking. This is a base coat guys, so it is a little bit heavier than um, heavier than the, the next stages we're going to be doing. It doesn't matter if this isn't completely smooth, we're not going for a completely smooth finish. Um, I mean, it still looks very smooth as a whole, but this, this type of level of interest here, um, that's what we're going for. Uh, on a space screen, it depends on the scale of it. Um, once I've done this, please remind me again, I'll grab, grab one of the Havocs from behind me because I can talk to you about um, painting infantry size stuff um, in reference to those because they came out quite nicely. Okay, so our light source is coming from up here. So we're just looking to kind of build up and give that effect. brush from all uh, all angles when testing on the palette because we're, we're going to be putting down paint from all angles. Now, so if I can show this, it's a lot like airbrushing. Um, we're going to be going at the model in the direction that we want our light source to be simulated from. So um, that'll do a few things. I'll demonstrate one of these now because it'll show it really nicely. So um, 
this base coat I've left a line down here because I've been going at this angle. Uh, I can see probably that there we go. Get a point with a knife. So this little line here that hasn't had paint on it, that's gonna um, that's gonna kind of push the the shadow effect that we've got here. Uh, this is still movable, so I'm just going to pick that as its angle. Treat this little side panel exactly the same as this panel, but on a smaller scale. We still want paint pretty much to have covered everywhere, but maybe we'll make sure that these bottom sections are a bit darker. Oh, a lot darker. We can fix that. It's always interesting for you guys to see how much I cock up and make mistakes when I'm painting. I'm not a perfect painter at all, and um, it doesn't matter if you're not a perfect painter at all. Mistakes happen. Reawaken that paint a bit. I'm going to fade into that bit there where I was just a little bit too harsh. You can see it's a very pokey motion here. Um, we're going at our model. A little bit lighter now. Oops. We're also going to start bringing in our dry brushing motion to uh, concentrate our colours more on the edges of the different parts that we've got here. It's both the techniques being used in conjunction with each other. Whoopsie. Definitely not perfect today, guys. So we're going to be... Bad timing, Mr. Steele. Was uh, Henry from Cult of Paint trying to call me? A little bit more white into our mix, and a lot more white into our mix. Carry on building this up here. So we're, we're both doing the stippling uh, for that fade and we're also beginning to do more and more of the actual dry brushing itself. So we want to be hitting the edges of the uh, of the sections with more and also giving like a, a global illumination effect. too bright. We'll have to see how it looks once it's bedded in a little bit. You can always flip it over and look at our other side. These uh, round sections here, I'm just going to look to get pretty much from above, even though our light source is from behind. I think they'll just look a little bit better if we're hitting them from above. Really starting to see some nice levels of interest. Now, I'm not sure how long we've been painting, but it's looking very tasty. sides. Mm
how to be careful using a technique this physical on any wobbly bits. This is a pretty sturdy model. Um, it's fairly heavy duty plastic on this uh, Legion stuff, so it's okay. But were it another model, we might have to be a little bit more delicate. A little bit more water in our palette there. Not got quite enough coming off. That's better. And this look on the other side. Okay, it's a little bit darker towards the front on the other side too. So we don't need to worry about it looking too off in comparison. Um, more and more as we come towards the, the latter stages of it, we'll be moving towards uh, traditional bun, bunny ears, uh, dry brushing. So picking out those edges, making sure we give them a lot of TLC, more white. I'll also step to a, uh, a clean, fresh brush fairly soon, probably. Flip it over. I can really smooth. Um, what we need to do though is start building this stuff up, and this is where we get our real, our real kind of like final finishing money effect. I've been working quite fast, so hopefully I don't knock any edges off. If you're doing this and you are trying to work quickly. Uh, it can be a good idea to whack down a quick uh, matte varnish um, if you are worried about knocking the edges off if you're doing physical stuff. These have got quite sharp edges as well, uh, these models, the casting is quite crisp. It's most crisp on resins generally because there's no shrinkage with resin manufacture so you can really get the uh, really get sharp edges which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I'm knocking off some of these edges a little bit, so I might go in with a quick matte varnish. Just to make it permanent. It's looking good though, it's looking very solid. I mean, for the amount of time that we've spent painting that, it's looking great. Um, uh, matte varnish, glaze medium. Matte varnish. Just a couple of drops in the brush. Backflush it a little. You could do this by hand if you want to, guys, if you don't have an airbrush. It's not even that much slower on something of this size. Super quick. And light as well. We've got thinner in there with the varnish, it's not going on neat. You can dry it out as we go with the airflow. One last one to make sure we've got all those edges. Easy peasy.
and let's step to a um i'm actually going to step to a, a big brush at this stage um i want to be hitting things globally and very softly and i actually prefer using a larger brush for this type of thing so just with white for now we'll see if that looks too harsh we're going in pretty gently at first so if it is too harsh it won't be the end of the world So no stippling at this stage. You could do some stippling if you wanted. There we go, some beautiful natural looking panels there building up if you didn't want to go to white here you wouldn't have to um, you could always use uh, like a very light gray and ivory uh, like pallid witch flesh anything that is close to white with a tint one way or the other a tint of blue tint of purple entirely up to you given uh, like depending on the effect that you're going for going to keep this still because it's moving around a little bit which is making things harder it's got really sharp edges that have been knocked off i think i've probably missed it with the varnish work on the other sections while that dries. Softly, softly. I'm going to step a little bit. Then these sections are a little bit too smooth and flat looking for my liking. You can very quickly make a big difference here with the level of contrast that you get with white. Hit this one from below, even though our light source is coming from above, we still want that edge to be hit. Gentle rolling motion here. This varnish is dried now. If not, we can always put a, a thicker layer on, but just a bit more softly. Flicked my thumb and rubbed off any excess there. Note to self, put it on silent next time. All right, so that's looking great. That's looking awesome. Final, uh, slightly heavier um, amount of white on the brush, but I'm going to be going with much more gentle strokes here. These are your, your gently, gently final ones, making sure we've hit those edges we want to hit softly, softly. These are your, your crisp edge highlights, the ones that people tell you you can't hit with, uh, without using very small, very precise brushes, and they're wrong.
and we're going to do some directional dry brushing down here. See if we can pick out that texture that we've stippled on. In hindsight, I probably would have stippled slightly more heavily on these actually, because it would have made my job a bit easier if there was um, if there was more texture that could be picked out. Um, but still looking really good overall. Now we've not got too much on the brush. We've worked a lot of it off. We can be a lot less gentle with what we're doing. Back to the moisture pad. One final pass. All right, there we go. That's looking great. A little bit more TLC on these guns. Please with that though. So super fast. Hopefully you saw how uh, how quickly that came together in the end there, even while talking my, my way through the technique. Um, and we've got a pretty decent match to our other side, despite the fact we've we've done it at like a month apart with different paints. Um, brush cleaning. Always get asked this. Back to my dampening pad, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dry brush on the model because it's got some texture and when you're dry brushing you're removing paint from the model with uh, with this motion it's exactly the same as the cleaning motion so I may as well pre-highlight some of the bits of the models and clean my brush at the same time especially on edges this sharp get a bit more moisture We'll see how much we reawaken with that. There we go, much heavier. Using our palette as a washboard, and then back to the top of the model. Build this all up. Uh, test it somewhere fresh on the palette. Barely any white coming off that, even with quite physical use. And there we go. Uh, any questions before I go? It's just going to be a quick one today, guys. Wanted to show you um, some smooth panel work. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. All right. The Havoc, of course. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Right. I need to track it down. One second. <laughs> Here's the havoc. I think that's a havoc. My 40k knowledge is not uh, is not fantastic. So let me get right in here. This came out super well. Um, the only part of this model that isn't dry brushed is I put in two black glazes here in the recesses of this panel to show you how you could involve other techniques. Uh, this amazing NMM looking section here, 100% uh, dry brushed obliterator. Thank you. Um, so all of these have just been done exactly the same way. Um, a bit more of the physical, uh, like left, right, up, down, circular motion, uh, dry brushing as opposed to the like in out pokey stippling. But, um, all of these, this section came out really nicely. It's been done with, uh, building up of layers with dry brushing and, um, different to, uh, a lot of the other stuff I've been doing. I've just gone from black up to white, basically. Um, a lot of the time I go backwards and forwards of pre-shading. That's when I've got color involved, um, like on the big guy. Uh, with this one, um, we've just gone straight up uh, black primer and then uh, a stippled black um, black and gray, kind of very dark gray base coat. And then from there we work up with dry brushing, um, stippling on sections like the shoulder pad. That makes a bit more sense. But a lot of it here you can see on this wood, if it will focus. Come on, there we go. It's just built up with um, with general dry brushing. Thank you. I was really pleased with this one. Um, the model's very helpful. Sections like this would um, work really well. The things that surprise people, because I, I demoed this live, the things that surprised people when I was live was using perhaps larger brushes than people were expecting me to use um, and highlighting with a rolling 
a rolling flicking motion on the inside of this star. I'll show you this actually. This is a brush that I've left to set overnight. Um, it's got a brush soap on it. Just going to crack it. Clean off that soap. Um, it's the uh, the one that comes in the set, the preserver and conditioner. And you look at that, and we've made a beautiful, um, perfect dry brushing brush out of that. That's how we have old brushes that have been kept in such good condition. Point them overnight, and then um, we use the dampening pad so we don't build up too much paint on them throughout use. This brush has shrunk a good like two, three mil, I'd say, um, but it shrunk inwards and made a perfect light bulb shape. That's one of our original testers. It's the same hair. It's just dyed. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how you do it on that. I will get some traditional Space Marines and show you on some 32 mil scale smaller models how I'd go about doing Space Marine. I've actually never done it on an actual uh, Ultramarine, um, not something chaosy. So it's going to be a learning experience for me. But I'll make sure that we show you guys how that goes so you can join in on the journey. Um, they go really well though. You just have to adjust the technique a little bit. It depends. It depends on the model. Like some have really low, like loads of really spiky sharp edges like this. Some have more trim, some have less trim. Um, you might decide you want it to be highlighted from above, um, or just like globally. A lot of space marines are just like, let's say it's an ultramarine, it's like flat blue. And this section is flat blue and the edges are more bright. And this section is flat blue and the edges are more bright. It's not like it's been hit from above or anything. You can absolutely dry brush like that. It's just first inside outside last style in terms of the first inside stuff is darker and the last outside stuff is brighter um, we can absolutely do that and I can paint them in a couple of different ways as well to show you how it works I'd like to do a Necron vehicle and a Tau vehicle as well I think they'd be really really useful for people to see the applications on stuff like that that's it guys um, thank you very much for joining me hopefully you've, you've seen just how useful it is having something like this you can test on you can see our palette here it's got exactly the same of same colors, obviously, that we've got there. And we've got to test it there every single time before we then put it on our model. So it's less worrying. All right, then. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Uh, all of these lives we're going to be retrieving and hopefully uh, putting it up on YouTube. It takes us a few tries sometimes if it won't, um, if it won't uh, render or um, the processing on YouTube sometimes doesn't always work. But... We are getting them all added. All right, then. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thank you very much.